it's changes are big when, when when it comes to to transitioning. It depends on how far you actually go. Like um, if people actually have top surgery, for example, it it, it can have you know change you know changing your body can, can be a big move. In in some cases, depending on on where you stand, it could be disfiguring to you. And quite obviously, that can you know that can be a very emotional pl uh, place to be. So yeah, it's it's been a while since I've uh, made a video, and I think about maybe it's like two weeks now. Um, getting back to the War of the Worlds thing soon. I've just been going through a fair bit lately. Um, so, but yeah, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was um, detransitioners, and um, I actually support detransitioners. Um, I, I don't particularly like how a minority of them blame the trans community as a cult into forcing them to become trans. Um, if they felt that way, then yeah, the trans community has a lot to answer for with regards to that. Um, but I, I've yet to see some literal evidence that that has actually been the case. Uh, so we're in that situation. Um, the, the problem I, I think is, is that when we start um, turning around saying, oh, detransitioners don't even make up 0.04% of the trans population, we're, we're kind of diminishing their experiences as well. And in many ways, I think that they, they have every right to be angry when you start diminishing them in that way. And yeah, we, we should listen more with regards to that. But one of the main reasons I kind of bring this up was um, I, I had interaction with a, an intersex D-trans woman, which, um, well, she's angry. Um, she, she originally made a, made a tweet saying that intersex should be a slur, which, which, which kind of like um, makes me as an intersex person and the intersex uh, activist groups that I'm actively a part of feel somewhat diminished. Well, we're kind of like um, being targeted as some kind of tool because her gender critical friends, for want of a better word, don't like the term intersex. They don't like it when intersex kind of like blows their argument out of the water that there can only be two chromosomal um, structures when it comes to sex. Um, of course, this woman practically disproves that, but at the same time, she's helping the gender criticals um, silence the intersex existence for whatever purpose I, I can't f fathom. Um, I think that she is kind of rightfully slow, so, and, and so am I to a certain extent, angry that the intersex argument is used to justify transition. Um, and it shouldn't be. Um, it, it really shouldn't be. The, the, the only place where the intersex argument really has a, a place in the, in the trans argument is when some gender critical says that um, there is no, no that there is no spectrum in sex where there actually is. But to turn around and use the intersex, being intersex as an argument for being trans is, to me, yeah, let, let me, um, it's, it's, this is really untidy today, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, um, I really feel that, um, that the, the only place where the intersex argument should be used in the, against the gender critical is when they're literally saying that there, that sex isn't a spectrum. Um, sex is only a binary. Which, um, in many respects, I'm sorry, is um, well, it's 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 wrong. It, it, it's wrong. We, we all know that it's that it's not simply a um, a spectrum. It, 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 that it's not that it's not simply a, a binary. And to be and to be quite frank, um, that's the only place um, the intersex argument belongs in the trans argument, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I really hate it when people say you have to be somewhat intersex to be trans. You don't. You, you don't. It's it's um, 
uh, I'm sorry, but uh, to, to other intersex people, that could be seen as um, diminishing them as well. I mean, um, yeah, I feel somewhat diminished every time somebody turns around and says to me, I think I might be intersex. I think there's a possibility. Um, I feel it. I, I feel that there's something, something about me. Well, check it out. Fine, by all means, check it out. But um, please, um, it kind of, if it turns out that you're not intersex and you're trans, it, it kind of makes us feel that, that we're the tools to justify your existence. You don't have to justify your existence. Intersex doesn't justify your existence. Being intersex doesn't justify your existence. Um, so please, please, um, I will, you know, uh, I'm not trans because I'm intersex. I'm trans because I'm trans. Um, or, or in many cases, you could say I've kind of detransitioned um, because I was transitioned at birth. And I was on testosterone pretty much half my life. So uh, I, I've literally gone back to who I was meant to be rather than who I was brought up to be. Um, I, as, as some of you probably already know, I'm. I'm not even on started HRT yet because my estrogen levels still haven't balanced out. So, um, and, and, and my body is kind of like developing naturally. Yeah, sure, eventually they're going to have to put me on HRT to, to, to get to the, to the point where I feel that like I ought to be, where, where, where I am. Uh, hold on, coffee. Speaking, speaking of. Um, to, to where I am, but, but, but at the moment, for over the last year, my body has more or less developed somewhat on a natural level. Um, my, my, my hormone levels have been rising, my breast tissue and my, my butt, oh my god, I have a butt, uh, has been on the rise. So, in, in many respects, um, I, I'm dealing, you know, I'm arguing with somebody who transitioned by choice and detransitioned de by choice. Um, I didn't. I, I detransitioned by revelation. I refer to myself as trans because, and I identify as trans because I lived as a man pretty much all my life. So, it, I'm, I'm in a very strange quandary when it comes to that. But I, I, I'm proud to, to say that I'm transgender, even though technically I'm detransitioning. It's, it's, it's really strange. It, it, it's really strange. So. But yeah, um, I, I don't really like the, the the you have to be somewhat intersex in order to be trans argument. I, I think that's um, that that really doesn't work. But um, actually, what I what I'm really here for is to take a look at this article um, by a detransitioner who actually founded the um, the detransition the, the anti um, trans gender critical detransitioning group um, when, when it came out when it started and her regrets uh, and, and how it started and I've kind of noticed the pattern here that um, gender criticals love to take advantage of the pain and suffering that detransitioners go through and these are very real and I, and I think trans people need to take detransition is more seriously than we do just because they're in a minority doesn't make them less important i mean trans people are in a minority with literally just 1.7 percent of the of america's population i'm not sure what it's what, what it is in the uk or the rest of the world but we are a, a minority ourselves a minority within a minority and even then at that point um some are trans women some are trans men some are trans fae, some are non-binary, some are fully transitioned, um, I, I say that with inverted commas, and some are, are, are haven't even gone through the through medical transition whatsoever. So we are a minority within a circle of minorities. So, and uh, it, it's, it's a breath of fresh air to, 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 to actually read an article, which um, I still haven't gone through um, one hundred percent. I kind of glanced through it, but I thought we could go for it together and um, see what has to be said. And yes, I'm, I'm using a um, 
um, some, something to, to read it out loud because I really can't stand the sound of my own voice. So let's begin, shall we? The article is called XD Transitioner Disavows the Anti-Trans Movement She Helps Bark. Uh, this was published last year on uh, by Evan Urquhart on the Slate. So anyway, um, here we go. So it's my first time doing this, so bear with me. Ah, I really hate it when I do that. Okay. So we want to get the first three in. All right. There we go, first place. This post is part of Outward, Slate's home for coverage of LGBTQ life, thought, and culture. Read more here. Though the mainstream press, especially in the UK, but not only there, often presents detransition as a deep, dark secret of the transgender community, the issue is actually pretty simple, something like 1% to 3% of people who begin a gender transition ultimately decide it's not for them, and they backtrack or travel elsewhere across the landscape of gender identity. It's a straightforward question of individual needs, and no cause for alarm at least not in the abstract. However, in some cases, a person who once transitioned will turn against the concept of trans identity itself. These people form activist groups around the idea that gender ideology was the source of their confusion and pain. They call themselves detransitioners, and they advocate for limiting access to medical transition in the name of protecting others from making what they see as their mistakes. Detransitioners consider trans acceptance as something akin to a cult and, as I can attest as a trans man and journalist who has tweeted critically of them before, they can respond with pronounced hostility toward anyone who questions their beliefs. Now, mm -hmm. yep. some former members of this so-called detransition movement have themselves grown disillusioned with detransition orthodoxy and are starting to speak out. They report that, despite their efforts to change, they're still trans. They want people to know that the detransition movement couldn't fix them indeed, they never needed fixing in the first place. True, true, yeah, um, uh, I think that, that that's basically the, the, the big issue here is, is, is how um, uh, gender criticals think that we're either mentally ill or we're, we don't know what we're doing and, and we need fixing and when detransitioners detransition, they're fixing themselves um, in, in many ways um, now let, 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 let's be honest with you um, a lot of detransitioners have a right to be angry uh, be it with themselves be it with people who have encouraged them to to move into this general direction um, it, it, it's genuine it, it should be uh, taken aboard but at the same time um, Gender criticals and turfs have no right to to platform them. They, you know, platform them. They should be listening to them. And I think the major problem is is that turfs and gender criticals are platforming them more than um, trans people are. Um, I don't know whether I agree that um, every detransitioner who has decided that they are not anti. Um, uh, that they are gender critical, you know, they are now anti-gender critical, um, st still think that they're trans. Um, uh, I, I, I can't comment. I'm not. It's it. it like I said, I, I'm an odd one when it when it comes to de-trans and, and transitioning. Um, but uh, I, I will accept that that that's what this particular article, you know, article writer is saying. So um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to do a sound check. Back in a minute. Okay, so sound check done, and it's working perfectly. I, I, I thought I, I made it far too quiet for you guys. I'm, I'm sorry. But anyway, yeah, um, I think this is a, a really good opening uh, at the end of the day. Um, it's Changes are big when, when it comes to, to transitioning. It depends on how far you actually go. Like um, if people actually have top surgery, for example, it, it, it can have, you know, change, you know changing your body can, can be... A big move in, in some cases depending on on where you stand it could be disfiguring to you and quite obviously that can you know that could be a very emotional pl uh, place to be um, but um, turfs and gender criticals um, no we'll just call them turfs at this point because I'm tired of using you know using the polite word it's like calling fascists alt-right 
when they're literally just fascist. But let's be honest. Um, but um, the, the, the uh, K Shivers is right. Um, uh, K Shivers is right. There's um, it's uh, gender criticals like to think that these people are fixing themselves. Um, trans people and detransitioners don't need fixing. Um, yeah, they need help. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, uh, but we don't need fixing. Um, they, they they need assistance, um, especially if they feel that they have made a, you know gone the wrong route or, or made a mistake. Um, they definitely need help, but they don't need fixing. And the more you, um, uh, this is ableism um, at the end of the day. And um, the um, turfs and um, gender criticals are really good at ableism. Sadly enough. Um, they, they love to make um, trans people feel guilty about who and what they are. So when somebody detransitions, it's, it's like an Easter basket to them, um, where they are literally given somebody who, who, who is, has regrets being trans. And um, they will lap it up like some kind of parasite. But anyway, moving on. That's, um, I'm so new to this. I'm gonna have to do this. More. I'm gonna do this live. I'm almost scared to though. So anyway, okay. <clears throat> Ky Skeevers is the most prominent of these apostates to date. She started to transition to male when she entered college, before later ending her transition. She now again identifies as trans masculine. Think more, Elliot Page, less Chaz Bono, and uses she slash her pronouns. Mm -hmm. From 2013 to early 2020. Skeevers published under the name Crash Chaos Cats, writing and vlogging regularly about her detransition and the beliefs that led her to it. She was interviewed for two major articles on detransition, both by cisgender female journalists, Rachel Monroe for The Outline uh, in 2016, all, and Katie Herzog for The Stranger in 2017. Both pieces tell the story of Skeevers identifying as male when she entered college, starting testosterone therapy soon after her mother's death by suicide, and going off testosterone while still identifying as genderqueer. They end with her giving up her genderqueer identity and embracing the idea that not only her gender dysphoria but all gender dysphoria was false and caused by internalized sexism combined with trauma an idea that she then did much to advance and proliferate online. Today, however, Skeevers has recanted this view. According to her, like the ex-gays of the 1990s and 2000s many of whom claimed they overcame their sexuality after religious conversion, only to reaffirm it later some detransitioned people still struggle in private against feelings of gender dysphoria that they can never fully suppress. It's very similar to ex-gay communities where there's a story out there that people change and it's great and everything, she told me. No one really changes. They learn to keep their desires under control. So do you see what's happening here? Um, um, obviously, the, the cis journalists themselves were, were, were gender critical. So they saw um, someone who detransitioned, -trans interviewed her, and created a narrative out of her detransition. Um, also kind of encouraging it in her as well, uh, by, say, uh, by making the claim that um, all transition is bad. All transition is bad. It doesn't help anybody. Where the statistics actually show that in 98.8% of all experiences, transition is actually the best thing for, for people with um, that level of, of gender dysphoria. Transition doesn't work for everybody who has dysphoria. Um, it doesn't work for 98% of people with dysphoria, but in 98% of people who have transitioned, it, it's worked very well. Um, so what's happened here is that um, these so-called cis journalists, um, inverted commas, um, definitely created a narrative and implanted that in um, Thai. Now, I, I, I'd like to point out that um, Thai, by many... Um, detransitioners, uh, but by many gender critical detransitioners has been called a liar and uh, a traitor lately, which comes as no surprise, which which comes as as, 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 as no surprise at the end of the day. Um, she's uh, later recanted, thankfully, and uh, I'm, I'm literally I'm happy to be following her on my Twitter. Um, 
I don't know if she's following me. Uh, I'm not even going to check. Maybe it's my vanity. Oh well, anyway, moving on. Let's do two paragraphs at a time because I, 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 I think it goes on a little too much. All right, there we go. Detransitioners may be a small group, even the highest estimates are in the hundreds compared mm -hmm. with an estimated number of transgender identified people in the low millions but they have been influential in pushing their denial that trans identity is real not surprising publicly detransitioners disavow not only their individual transition histories but also the fact that transition helps trans people worldwide to live comfortably in their own skin although a few men also identify as detransitioned most of the community congregates in sex exclusive online forums for mm -hmm. detransitioned women only they believe gender dysphoria is common among women and disappears when they learn to love and accept their female bodies. Which is not true. Detransitioned women have That's gained influence true. because of strong interest in their stories by both anti-trans activists and some journalists. In addition to being featured in countless horror stories aimed at frightening parents of gender non-conforming youth and undermining trans people organizing for their rights, this influence translated to a major loss for trans rights in the UK last December, when Kira Bell, a detransitioned woman, successfully argued in court that doctors and parents of transgender youth were incapable of helping them to navigate decisions about transition-related treatment without court oversight. Uh, and that ruling was, thankfully, overturned in the Supreme High Court, thankfully. Um, so uh, we don't have to worry too much about that now. Um, j j just to point it out that she is now trying to get the law changed. Uh, with regards to that, so that the courts will rule in her favour. And uh, judging by the way Turf Island is going right now, I wouldn't be surprised if they're successful there. It, it, it's kind of scary. But anyway, um, as you can see, uh, propaganda. That, that's basically all, all it is at the end of the day. Um, TERFs and um, gender criticals are nurturing this kind of self-hatred. The, the, you know, these poor decisions that they that these people made as adults and uh, are now taking it out on the rest of the trans community um, now I will point out that if um, any trans person is going about telling them that these people were wrong to transition go fuck yourself that that's all I all I want to say about that um, go fuck yourself they had every right to make this decision what they don't have a right to do is to tell the rest of us um, um, or every other trans child out there or every other trans adult out there that they were wrong to transition. They don't have that right. They don't get that right. Um, unfortunately, uh, gender critical, uh, TERFs, not going to use the term gender critical like I said, TERFs like to nurture this self-hatred and they like to nurture Detrans people who detransitioned, even though they're in the minority, as an excuse, as an excuse for their hatred uh, to tr outlaw um, tra transitioning, and that's sick. Um, that's sick. At the end of the day, also, I will point out that um, anybody using um, detransition, like I said before, anybody who is using intersex as an excuse for for, for transitioning, um, I have no respect for either. I, I, I don't have a respect for people who say, oh, intersex uh, justifies um, being transgender. Um, the intersex community is, 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 not, is not your tool, and neither should the detransition community be the tool of the, um, tr the anti-transgender movement. So. The Bell case was what finally prompted Skeevers to go public with her criticisms of the detransitioned women's movement, despite being one of its founders. It was Kira Bell in the UK, and seeing how detransition can be used to dramatically affect trans people's access to health care, she said. People give a certain weight to those detransition stories. We always tried to emphasize that there were a lot of us, but the gatherings that took place were not large. They never got more than 30 women and not all of them were detransitioners. Ah, she added, surprise. trans people deserve access to support, and it makes no sense to shut down people's access to medical transition just because some people end up detransitioning. True. At 35, 
Skivers is no longer saying she was wrong about everything, either in her transition or her detransition. She now identifies as a transmasculine butch dyke, genderqueer, something like that, she told me, and her she slash her pronouns contrast with her male sounding voice and masculine presentation. She doesn't think that every single detransitioned woman is really trans, uh -huh. and understands that others may have different experiences. Skivers believes strongly that every person deserves the right to question their gender identity and find their own paths. True. True. I, I don't know if I could really add to that. Um, she's basically said everything that I've already said before. So um, we'll, we'll just continue. Move this video along, shall we? She recognizes the good in her detransition experience, explaining, there's not always space in trans and queer communities for trans masculine people to talk about internalized misogyny. Uh -huh. I could talk about it openly without worrying that people were going to be upset by it. She even sees the good in some of the ideology, which is based in radical feminist ideas about internalized misogyny and male violence. Not all the radical feminist ideas were terrible either, I learned a lot about women's history, Skivers said. A lot of what I read was pretty interesting, so I'm glad that I explored that stuff. Mm -hmm. Still, as the detransition community Skivers helped spark grew, its repressive and transphobic sides eventually became too much to ignore. Skivers also found her gender dysphoria, which she once thought had disappeared for good, began to come back strongly over time. My sense of being a woman unraveled, and I was feeling more like a dude or a gender weirdo, she recalled. But I was fighting against these feelings because I'd built a life in the detransition community, and I knew a lot of the other women in the community wouldn't be happy with it if I came out as trans. I tried to explain it in a radical feminist framework, and find the root causes, and do everything to make these feelings go away, and that didn't really work. The only thing that did work to make them go away was accepting them. I had to make a move to accept them. Yeah, that, 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 that's all that's required. The, 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 at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, the best way to move forward is acceptance. And um, uh, I think that she, she's right. She's right. These, um, we've got to accept that these people aren't going to accept us. Uh, they're not going to accept trans people, they're not going to accept the argument turfs and never going to change their mind. No matter how many times you argue the point on Twitter. Oh my god, Twitter is the trans uh, trans versus turf, the turf battleground right now. I'm almost getting to the point that I'm tempted to just shut down my entire Twitter at this point. I'm, I'm so tired of the whole thing at, at this point. But uh, I, I admire what she did. I admire what she did. She's she's not going at them in a way in which she says, "Oh, you are wrong. Therefore, you, you know, you are the worst person on the face of the planet." And thank God for that. Thank th th thank God for that. I, I think that's that's the best way to handle it. That's the best way to handle it. Turfs are the the most evil people on the planet, but I I I, I don't particularly feel that uh, that uh, that uh, detransitioners who are in the turf camp are particularly. In, in the same camp as the people that um, nurture their their mistakes to, uh, to, to their advantage, um, they're certainly not as as um, hypocritical as Buck Angel, who is fully trans, I might add, and um, it, it was was very upset when he was referred to as she by the very people he supported. Very angry about that, but has no problem. Um, uh, misgendering other trans people so uh, yeah um, that yeah what else can I say what else can I say I'm just rambling a second ex-member of the detransitioned women's community whom I'll call Max confirmed Skeever's characterizations Max who identifies as trans masculine and asked to use she slash her pronouns for now requested to use a pseudonym and that this article avoid identifying details, because she's fearful of the harassment that detransitioned women and their anti-trans allies direct against trans people who disagree with them. Skeevers mm -hmm. and Max don't know each other. While Skeevers was becoming disillusioned and distancing herself from detransition circles, Max, in her early twenties, was beginning to explore detransition. 
she said she would watch Skiverse detransition videos obsessively. Later, Max watched the negative response to Skiverse leaving the community with discomfort. Unlike Skiverse, Max was never a prominent detransitioner, although for a time her social media accounts attracted a following from detransitioners and anti-trans activists. Like Skiverse, Max feels some insights gleaned from her time in the detransitioned women's community were worthwhile, particularly about the misogyny in the trans-masculine community and learning to grapple with the feeling that there was no place to freely express doubts, fears, or regrets as a trans person. As a person of color, Max also has strong criticisms of how trans peers responded to her non-whiteness, and of racism in the trans community at large. Oh, I, I didn't know, no, no anything about that i didn't know anything about <coughs> excuse me i didn't know anything about the racism that 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 that, that detransitioners face uh, i'm pretty sure that's probably an experience that she had had herself so i can't really comment on uh, on on that but uh wow that, that 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 that's something that that is really not not surprising so much because um quite recently we, we, we've had to deal with um Turfs who have literally said that uh, trans people were not targeted in the Holocaust, which in itself is is not, which in itself is is not true. Um, trans people, gay people, transvestites were not given a category. They were just thrown into camp, concentration camps based on their degeneracy, as 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 they like to point, you know, as the Nazis wanted to point out. So, yeah, that's um, yeah, okay. Whew, that was a lot to take in. That's that's a lot to take in. Um, wow. Okay. After coming out and beginning medical transition in college, Max had doubts that were exacerbated by complications from her treatment. Mm -hmm. She began reading and posting in online forums dedicated to detransition and eventually asked her friends and family to return to using she slash her pronouns for her. She still feels she transitioned much too quickly and thinks poorly of the therapist she saw during her transition. So However, she should. it didn't take long before hateful attitudes toward trans people and widespread pressure not to retransition in the community began to trouble her. I was feeling really confused about my gender and really frustrated about it, and frustrated with having to go on testosterone, Max said. I thought, maybe I wouldn't need testosterone by immersing myself in that community. But I realized, I still want tea but I really feel like I shouldn't. Why did I feel like I shouldn't? I felt like I shouldn't because I'd been gulping down TERF rhetoric, she said, referring to the beliefs of trans-exclusionary radical feminists. Asked why she wanted to speak up, Max offered up her harshest criticisms of the movement, I guess the biggest thing for me was realizing I was taken advantage of. I was very recently trans and very recently detrans and people basically used my experiences as ammunition against trans people. I let it slide, for a while, because I was so used to being ignored and even ostracized by the trans community. And there we have it. There, there, there we have it. Like I said, um, uh, they took advantage of her. And uh, to, be, to be frank, yeah, uh, the trans community must share a, a, a fair bit of the blame if they were ostracizing her because she decided to take it slow, or she had doubts, or these people were taking advantage of her and putting ideas in her, her head. Um, Detransitioners need to be listened to. It's as simple as that. Um, they need support. I don't care if they are not one percent of the population. Their voice is just as important as a, as someone who is transitioning. Um, but yeah, what, what, what she pointed out here was, was how quickly the turf community took advantage of her rather than choose to listen to her concerns, rather than choose to, to give her a voice. They didn't give her a voice. They became her voice, which is, which is sad. I know, Kitty, this is, this is upsetting. But you, you have water and you've got a bowl full of food, so don't complain. No, don't complain. Don't complain. So, yeah, we, we need to listen more to the to the D-trans community and um, stop making enemies out of D-transitioners. Just, just stop. Um, I have, um, don't have many D-transition friends. I have, I have 
to where I live locally and uh, they are very supportive of the trans community and one of them still very much considers herself transgender so yeah so anyway hey kitty in talking to former and current members of the D-Trans community, I also spoke with people who described their experiences differently. Not everyone who detransitions experiences dysphoria again or holds transphobic views, mm -hmm. emphasized one true? detransitioned 18-year-old from the UK. I'd like people to know that D-Trans women genuinely possess a variety of viewpoints, and mm -hmm. painting us all with the same brush doesn't help anyone, she said. This young woman, who asked to remain anonymous, said transition may help dysphoria for some people and that she doesn't take issue with trans women using women's restrooms. She also believes that every study that shows medical transition is widely effective has major flaws, and that her own gender dysphoria stemmed from internalized misogyny. She said confronting those misogynistic attitudes has reduced her own gender dysphoria a great deal. Because of her very visible and central role in the D-trans community, Skeevers takes a lot of the responsibility for its most toxic aspects. Skeevers is clear that she now believes she, and others in the community, hurt trans people by telling them their dysphoria was internalized misogyny that would go away if they loved themselves enough. It did. The D-trans community, with her as a participant, also hurt trans people by allying with extreme anti-trans activists and giving them political ammunition against trans people, making detransition stories a central feature of anti-trans fear-mongering and supporting activism aimed at limiting access to medical transition. So, yeah, um, the article is, is nearly finished, but it's literally saying what I've always believed for a long time when it comes to these minority of uh, detransitioners in the TERF community, about um, how they're literally taken advantage of. Now, I'm pretty sure that there are some people in this D-trans community that know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what it is they're doing. They know exactly um, that their rhetoric causes harm, but they don't care because um, they made a bad choice, but they don't want to take responsibility for it. But at the same time, um, I think that there are a lot of detransitioners who are s still kind of torn up by, by what they've done or, or, or uh, still torn up about the decisions that they've made or still feel that they're still not ready to make that final jump and they may never make that final jump and more the support more the support to them I say more more support to them I say um, yeah yeah oh good grief I'm sorry it, it's late it's late no I don't want to to, to select more outward wow I don't select that, that commercial thank you Skeevers hopes that by putting her real name on this story and describing the patterns she helped perpetuate, her words will ring true, despite her history of saying very different things than what she says now. One such pattern is treating the desire to transition as if it were a drug addiction a persistent impulse to be guarded against throughout a formerly transitioned person's life. True. Skeevers shared evidence of language detransitioned women had plucked from self-help groups, such as Alcoholics Anonymous applied to the ongoing desire to appear male terms like triggers and phrases like we commit that are instantly recognizable to anyone familiar with the language of 12-step programs. Not incidentally, this is exactly how many in the ex-gay movement view persistent romantic desires for members of the same sex. It's exactly the same. It's, 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 it's exactly the same. It's, it's, wow. Wow, that is that is so insightful. Uh, wow, um, Ty, you're a smart, smart girl. Um, smart girl. Uh, this girl. I hope I hope I got the pronouns right. I'm sorry. I hope I get the got the gender right. I, I apologize if I if I didn't. Um, I'm trying. I, I only recently heard about you yesterday, so um, forgive me. Forgive me. So anyway. Um, and go on to the last paragraph. Contrary to these methods, the goal of transition is not to temporarily stave off gender dysphoria, treating it as a lifelong struggle against triggers, but instead to drastically reduce or eliminate such feelings, permanently. Yep. Numerous studies, representing an overwhelming medical consensus, support this approach. Yep. Thousands of trans people, including this reporter, K. 
can testify to the relief transition provides. Regret is rare far rarer than the regret rates of other comparable treatments. This does not mean transition works for every single patient. Yep. No treatment can claim 100% success, and people with doubts and regrets about transition are real and deserve safe, affirming spaces to discuss these feelings. Yes, they do. It does mean that transition is an effective treatment for gender dysphoria. In fact, transition, and not any amount of radical feminist ideology, self-help, or anti-trans paternalism is the only effective treatment for gender dysphoria that currently exists. The ex-gay movement is much diminished, though far from gone, these days, after many of its leaders have publicly come out as gay and admitted that, as hard as they prayed, the gayness never truly went away. Skeevers and Max's stories are an early sign that, in time, the detransition movement may be destined for the same ignoble fate. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Um, like I said, um, detransitioners have a right to their voice. They have a right to be who they are. They have a right not to choose not to transition and have a right to detransition. And they have a right to their voice. They have a right to be heard and they have a right to all the help that they need. But at the same time, what they don't have a right is because they transitioned to tell other people who have transitioned that they were wrong to transition. That is something that they do not have a right to. They do not have that right whatsoever. And just like this um, intersex person I was dealing with who detransitioned, she has absolutely no right to tell me that I'm a slur. She has absolutely no right to tell me I'm a slur simply because she feels uncomfortable with the term. Not every intersex person is a part of the intersex community. I get that. And if she feels insulted being called intersex, fine, I, I, I will accept that. But um, she's not going to tell me and um, thousands of other people like me that um, we should be considered uh, uh, slurs and sirens. The whole point of that I mean, bringing that, that intersex argument into this is we're silenced. Very few people even know us, even in my trans group, even, even in my trans discussion group. When I bring it up, nobody's heard of it before. Sadly, the, the, the sad thing for me is, is that when I bring it up, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people there are kind of saying, oh, I must be intersex. And I I don't know what to say. I, 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 I get very quiet and, and stumb at that point because um, it's 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 kind of insulting and, and maybe i should actually point it out and say if you feel that you're you're at sex go find out but please whatever you do don't use it as an argument as to why you're trans please it's 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 kind of insulting to the intersex community as a whole like i said i'm not trans because i'm intersex i am trans as a result of my intersex history but my being intersex has nothing to do with my being trans. <laughs> never has, never will. I'm, I'm an intersex person who just happens to be a trans woman. That's it. That's it. But yeah, they they they, they are literally right at, at this point. The, um, the it's like the the ex gay community say just because I'm no longer gay means that gay people don't exist. The, the detransition move, the the, the so called. Um, gender critical um, detrans movement is doing exactly the same thing what, 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 what makes what they're doing any different they're not in the right they're in the wrong I'm not saying that these people don't have genuine concerns and genuine things to be angry about but at the same at the same time they have no right to tell other trans people that they're in the wrong just like um, ex so-called ex gay people have no right to tell gay people that they're not actually gay it, it doesn't work like that so yeah, um, that's my take on the D-trans, uh, the gender critical D-trans movement, um, and, and maybe a little bit of the intersex movement too. I think I've got to do a little bit more on it, you know, the intersex community as well, I, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's how I feel, and this is obviously how uh, Ty Schaefer feels as well. And I'm grateful for this article. I'm grateful for her coming out. I'm grateful for her input, and I wish her. The best of luck and to all you people out there ladies gentlemen envies transitioners and detransitioners alike i wish you all nothing but the best till next time bye